Hello, thanks for joining me. Today I'm in Reading. I'm in a strange area behind a few office blocks. There's a river here. This is the Holy Brook. And what we're going to do in today's video, we're going to go and explore the ruins of Reading Abbey. The reason I start here by the Holy Brook is if we come along here, we find our first section of ruins. This is the Abbey Mill Arch, completely surrounded by modern buildings. It feels really sort of out of the way, like there's bustling streets all around us, but you come behind these offices and this is what you find, this section of archway. We're gonna go through this arch into this little area here and there's no one around. But there is the mill arch. So down there would have been the Abbey stables. We're gonna find our way. It almost feels impossible, but somewhere behind the offices, there's some more Abbey ruins. We're gonna go and find them and we're gonna have a look around them. So look at that. In all these modern offices, you've got this very old. Well, the Abbey was founded by Henry I in 1121. So I'm not saying though the actual masonry dates from 1121, but it's it's very old. So the Holy Brook flows along here. It flows off under some office blocks over there and joins the River Kennet. So Abbey founded by Henry I. He never lived to see the Abbey completed. But I understand he, Henry I, is buried in the Abbey. It was officially opened by Henry II. Henry III came to visit the Abbey quite regularly, three or four times a year. Henry III would when he was passing by, he would stay at the Abbey. Not sure what the history of the Abbey is with Henry IV, V, VI and VII, but as you probably guessed, Henry VIII closed it. And then in, that was in, I think, 1538, Henry VIII closed the Abbey. Then, you know, a lot of it all disappeared. You've got lots of things to remind you that there was an Abbey, the Abbot's House, Abbey Gardens. So there wasn't much of interest to happen to the Abbey after that, until around the Victorian times. That was when they decided they wanted to open up the Abbey. Ah, I can see the ruins. So, that is a computer generated image of what the Abbey would have looked like. So we were somewhere off screen. So you can see there was the refectory, the kitchen, monks dormitory, and of course the church. Now, most of the church is gone, but I understand the end is still there. So I think it's sort of this part of the Abbey here, which we're gonna go and explore the ruins of. So let's go up here. So, as I said, there's been a few Henrys involved and King Henry's and then um, not such a glamorous Henry but today on the 27th of May 2023 Henry's Adventures comes to make a video here so this abbey has a long association with Henry's. We're coming up to the abbey now. Oh what we'll do we'll go just down there because that's where the Holy Brook joins the River Kennet so we were following the Holy Brook. It was quite a good place to build an abbey because it was very accessible with the River Kennet you could you know use boats to get out towards the Thames because we're not too far from where the River Kennet joins the Thames in later history of course the Kennet and Avon Canal would have come along oh yeah look see beneath another office block look you can just see the Holy Brook let's go and have a look oh we could have actually walked straight under there look here's the, the Holy Brook all oh, this modern office block over there so I'll show you where the Holy Brook joins the River Kennet and then as I said we're going to go and explore the ruins, which are right there in front of us, or as much of the ruins as we possibly can. So we go around here, we get one last Hi. view. Hello. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. We've got one last view of the, the Holy Brook, and it flows right out there into River Kennet. It's also, as I said, later became the Kennet and Avon Canal. You can see there's a barge there, and that's all the prison there, and that's ruins of the Abbey. So let's go and find our way into the Abbey, and we're going to go and explore it. I've just come up from the river through the maze of modern office buildings but we're going to go and explore the actual ruins of the Abbey. The reason I've brought you this way around is I want to show you something here. This is the Abbey Gatehouse. It has been restored by Sir Giles Gilbert Scott, you know, who also built London St Pancras railway station. So it may not be 100% original but it's uh, probably one of the most prominent parts of the Abbey which survives. So I'll just let you have a quick look at that. So it really makes a change in amongst all the modern buildings we have around us. Well, that one is built to look quite traditional, which is nice. So that's the building there. We're just going to quickly walk through and then we'll have a look. We're going to go into the Forbury Gardens and then we'll walk down to the ruins of the Abbey. So that's, that's the, the gatehouse. So you have a look at the gatehouse from this side. That's the Abbot's Walk. Now about here, out there. That's where the front of the church would be. So imagine a big grand frontage of the Abbey Church. And there's the gatehouse. 
We're going to go into Forbury Gardens now under this very nice wisteria arch. It smells nice, I know you can't smell it, but it smells nice. There's a little cafe here, and the Forbury Gardens are generally a very pleasant place. Yeah, just come and walk around if you're in Reading, they're worth a visit. There's lots of boards as you go around, so it says, look, you have found the Abbey Church. As I said, this, we would have been in the Abbey Church if we'd come here, you know, in like the 11 or 1200s, and we would be walking right now. I would be walking you up the nave towards the high altar. But now it's just all rose bushes and various other flowers. Oh, wow, look at that. A handkerchief tree. This is one of my favourite trees. The reason it's called a handkerchief tree is because if you look, you may be able to see... There's these white leaves that hang off like handkerchiefs. Oh, there's one there that's fallen off. Look at this. So see what I mean? It looks very much like a handkerchief. And it's only about two months of the year, sort of late May, or two weeks of the year rather, late May, early June, that you'll see the handkerchief. So there we are. That is the fantastic sight of a handkerchief tree. That's really made my day that I found a, a handkerchief and lie it down there. So yeah, handkerchief tree. That's a nice little surprise. Get a nice view over of the Forbury Gardens. There's a church in the corner there. That's the local catholic church which is also built on part of the monastery site so as we walk along here like i said we are literally walking right up the the nave of the church there's a few older buildings which have also been built on the abbey you can now see the ruins just there we're going under there so imagine all that that i say there's a church there there's a little bit of ruins just there which um you're probably not going to really see but we're going to go down under this bridge and this will take us into the actual abbey itself. So it's not a huge amount of ruins to see here, but it's exciting to see what there is. So we go through this bridge, out of Forbury Gardens, and into the world of the ruined abbey. I suppose that was a way of getting, people could get to those houses without actually having to go through the abbey. So we get to here. Now, in 2018, when I last visited Reading, the abbey was closed, they were restoring it. You can see how they've restored an arch there quite nicely and look at this. this this looks like this is the bottom of a very tall grand pillar that would have been part of the main church there's a picture here so we can, I can help explain with the picture so that is the church so that's that's the um the gatehouse where we came in the church would have been just there we've walked up the nave we're about here somewhere so the end of the church would have been there what we see here this is the remains of one of the chapels that would have survived. Now I mentioned that the abbey was founded by Henry I and I said that he was buried in the abbey. Well, to go over here, there's a little plaque to say, near to this spot was buried King Henry I, who founded Reading Abbey. So somewhere around here, we have a king buried. If you look at the site today, you can see what remains. I say that was one of the chapels. There would have been the high altar would have been around there somewhere where that wall is over there that's where the lady chapel would have been so we're going to have a bit of a, a walk around see what there is left now, there's a better picture here for a different angle so as i say there was the lady chapel well, well you can see that lady chapel's down there so this is founders chapel it shows two windows if you look there they are so there was no window there because there was more buildings against it on that side so that's why there isn't a window there the church would have run down there of course that building wouldn't have been there we're now in the south transit so there'd have been the north transit so imagine the crossing imagine looking up to a great big grand window it really must have been amazing yeah it was one of the wealthiest and largest abbeys in europe it seems a shame in its ruined state but in a way it's also really quite fascinating to find it in its ruined state oh look there's a, a good picture just seen that picture to give you an idea that is what it looked like once this big so it really was a, a huge abbey as all as most of these ruined abbeys were this was a cluniac abbey i understand the cluniac order also interestingly they've put down in concrete where the actual door would have been so when i come to these places i like to try and not just walk through walls just because the walls are low i don't always think you should walk through them just because they're low i like to walk you know through where the doors would have been so it's quite nice that they've marked out that door we're going to go through this arch here now we'll go around to the chapter house have a look at that and then we'll work our way down back down towards the river so this this is the remains of the chapter house here you can see grand arches i'm going to go into the chapter house so chapter houses weren't 
a sort of religious place. They were where they would have meetings to discuss finances and things like that. And then you've got the prison, the building in the middle of the prison, framing itself in the wall of the chapter house. So it is, it's all quite tall, the masonry that survives here. So it's nice to see this all you know, surviving. Okay, there's no roof on it, but on such a grand scale. Let's have a look out there. We can't actually get out another way, so we have to find a way around. Yeah, if we look down there, the grass down there will take us eventually round back down to the River Kennet. So I'm going to find my way down to River Kennet. So we'll effectively finish the video where we, where we, near where we started. I'm not going to go back up the Holy Brook, but we are going to go to that part, to the water part of the Abbey. We get to here. So I think these were the monks' dormitories all down here. You can see quite a strong wall. It survived. We're going to walk through another arch here to another part of the ruined Abbey. Oh yeah. Now if you look down there, you can see. So there's part of a, a wall there. So I think this would have all been buildings all down here. This would have been where the monks would have probably slept and ate. Um, this wall here, this, um, yeah, so this was the monks' dormitory. So we are kind of down there now. So there was the, and there was the infirmary, which would have been more over there. So I've just always been fascinated by ruined abbeys. I've always enjoyed exploring them and I like to try and imagine them as they would have been. I think ruined abbeys are fascinating buildings. So, Okay, I'd have been inside, but imagine if I wasn't inside, there would have been a big towering church above me just there. So, it's really a fascinating place, this Abbey. If we get to here, now we're, I was down there a moment ago to see the River Kennet, and we walked up to see the Abbey Gatehouse. This, this gate here seems to be locked, but there is another way out. We're coming back into here. Yeah, quite a good view. If you look up there, so there's the Abbey. Okay, the sun's messing us about now. Um, and the prison is there, but again, the problem is the sun's very intense there, it's a very bright sunny day, so it does sometimes interfere when you're trying to make a video, which can be a bit annoying, but yeah, that's, that's the prison there, it, it's there, you can see it a bit better now, and that's the rest of the abbey, and then if you were to look through this window, you can just see there's a modern office block called Abbey Wharf, it's nice, despite all these modern office blocks existing, they've got names that reflect the history that, you know, there was once and there still is, this rather large ruined abbey here. Of course, it wouldn't have been ruined once. It was near a, a doorway up there, so I think there'd have been a floor, you know, probably just a bit above my head, there'd have been a floor. So, as we look back across Reading Abbey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Bye.